Hi guys, and welcome back. And is anyone else getting clown vibes from the season? <laughs> it's a tad bit ridiculous, but what else were we expecting? We knew what we were getting ourselves into, right? Anyway, so we're going to start off with Dipshit and Sophie. And she's on her way back to their apartment because it went so well at the selfie gallery that she thought, yeah, I didn't get enough gaslighting for one night, so let me go back home for some more. I'm feeling anxious to go back just because things ended really badly last night at the selfie gallery. And I just, I'm so emotionally drained. Yep, there is nothing like running back into a burning building. I really just don't want it to be another argument. Oh, it will. Because I don't want us to just be separated forever. I do want to be with Rob and live with him. As he continues to cheat throughout your marriage. And if things go well, then I will stay. But if things don't go well, then I don't know what my next steps will be. Like, there is nothing redeeming about this dude. Where I can say, alright, I can at least see that he has that. And don't say his looks, because with all his hideous qualities, all I want to do is hurl when I see his face. Honestly, we don't even need to see the rest of this story. We already know it's not going to go well. But for shits and giggles, we'll keep this crazy train going. Hey, what's up? How are you? What's that, like, a fourth of your stuff? That's a case? There is nothing like coming home after being away for two months and being greeted like that. Hooray for love. And look, he got her some disheveled flowers that he ripped off a roadside flower bush. I had to stop mid-traffic, jumped out in the rain, ran over and probably technically stole them off of somebody's bush. Listen, there's no shame in picking flowers from some bush. But dude, you're in your 30s trying to win back a girl. Wait a minute. Trying to win back your wife that you cheated on. You could have at least worked on the presentation. Be careful with them. <laughs> I just fight myself. There's literally, yeah, there's a lot of thorns on that. Why do the sad little flowers look like they've been massacred off the bush? You know, Rob, there's these things called stores, and in these said stores, they sell flowers. You should really try them next time you're caught cheating. So with the flowers, he also had a lovely note. That's just a list of things I think would be very helpful from you to uh, help us cohabitate. What the hell, cohabitate? He honestly makes it sound like she's just some roommate that he's having issues with for not flushing the toilet, not his wife. I thought it was going to be like a love letter or something. Like I saw the flowers, the flowers on it. I thought it was going to be something letter. really cute. Sophie, what in God's green earth would make you think that this one would ever do something nice? Washing off dishes before putting in the sink. Put makeup and hair products back after you. Don't get mad at me. If you don't get what you want, be patient and I'll likely work it out for you. He is such a narcissist. I mean, look at his face while she's reading that. He has that like holier than thou smug look that you just want to take a crap on this is a piece of some of the bigger problem yes the we big have bigger problem, problems i left because of you this is rob shifting blame of him cheating to her being messy i'm literally just trying to find ways for us to have less issues he truly doesn't believe that he did anything wrong honestly i don't think he does you can tell by his actions and just by the way he goes about doing things why can't you just clarify for me what I can do? Because I don't want to have these interactions. Because Stop these online interactions cheating on me. And apparently he's a nitpicking and controlling a-hole. What a surprise, right? I encourage do you, you or do you not count the toilet roll papers of how many I've used? So the rekindlement goes south as expected. You shout at me in the home even now, okay? You raise your voice at me. You have issues. I think what will fix a marriage is you get some therapy. And she decides to leave. I saw you yesterday, you gave me a little one-arm hug. You don't think I noticed all this I'm going. Goodbye. Wait a minute, she forgot her luggage. You know, the pink one that you rolled in? Forgot it. <laughs> Never mind. So, cut to round two of this toxic roller coaster, and Rob is trying to win Sophie back. This time, he's using different tactics, it seems. This time, without a tours list or flowers that were probably pissed on by a dog. I'll admit that I've been lacking a little bit when it comes to romance. She's dying to get me to do soft, sweet things. Again, what does Sophie see in him? I mean, honestly. Yeah, I got you a rose. Oh, Trying to pick you. the right pink. I appreciate it. And he bought her flowers this time. Aw, baby boy's learning. Now, if you just learn to stop cheating, then everything would be great. Well, maybe not great, but good. Kind of 
think I ruined it a little bit with the list of things. Yes. You don't say. Anyways, so he wrote this poem all by himself. Did you write that yourself? I came up with it myself. No one helped you. Nobody helped me. Aw, he didn't even use Facebook memes. I was really surprised when I found out it was like a love poem. He's never done anything like this for me before. It's an amazing step. And if it continues like this, I will move home. Oh, how quickly this girl forgets that he's a cheating asswipe. So they go to this bar to learn two-step. And it's cute. They're having a good time-ish. And while they're dancing, Sophie lets Rob know that her friend Caleb from the UK is coming to visit. And Rob is not happy because it's a dude. The fact that he's going to fly all the way across the ocean to see her, it doesn't make me feel very good at all. So Spitfire here says that if Caleb is not ugly, then he's not going to be okay with him. Is he ugly? He's not ugly. If this dude doesn't look like a like Gollum, then I don't like it. Newsflash, dum dum. Just because you're a vain a hole who prioritizes looks doesn't mean everyone else does. He could be butt ugly and still be a thousand times better of a man than you, especially since the bar is really low here. So I need to take a minute because my dog Mango wants to tell you to like and subscribe. All right, let's get back to the show. So now let's move on to Lego Hair Lady and Mahmood. So it's the next day, and apparently they did it the night before. Hooray! Mahmoud did not sleep in his new pajamas. <laughs> In fact, he didn't really wear anything to bed. I, I honestly, I don't know how, I, I can't see it. Not that I'm trying to picture anything, but I just can't see them doing anything together because they have zero chemistry and are so incompatible. Anyway, so Mahmoud is grossed out by the American breakfast. Too sweet. <clears throat> you want to try this one? I don't know how you edit that. It seems so crazy. <laughs> And I honestly can't blame him. With Nicole serving him these huge ass artery clogging donuts. Nicole, you honestly could have whipped him up two eggs or taken him to a diner, but instead you stuff his face with these gross ass things. Anyway, so they decide to go to the Santa Monica Pier and they stop at a little beach shop. Yeah, <laughs> even has a back too. <laughs> Shut up, what are you doing? And Nicole talks about how she took the U.S. for granted. I just love it. Like, I just love everything about it because anything goes here. I would love to see Mahmoud in a bikini shirt. Okay, that's great, Nicole, that you like that anything goes attitude. But I'm going to tell you right now that that is not Mahmoud. Nicole, you're doing to him what he did to you in Egypt. And if you remember correctly, you didn't like that. And I'm sure he might be feeling a certain way about it, too. Just saying. I understand that Mahmoud is missing his family, but I want him to be as excited as I am. Well, good for you. But you can't force someone to be excited. She's so stubborn. As much as a free spirit she paints herself out to be, she is super controlling when it comes to other people. So this next scene really showed a different side of our sweet, mousy, docile Nicole. And he's tired and homesick. But, you know, I just want him to just have a little fun today. I am demanding that you have fun. Because you barely smiled today at all. So. <laughs> Like, and I just don't want to be. Lady, it's the first day. Give him a minute. So they walk by this Muslim girl in a hijab. And I guess he stares at her or checks her out. You like that? Eh? The girl in purple. Why are you talk about him? And you know what I saw him. And she loses it. Stop dead in your tracks to f*** stare at him. Stop what? Like... Well, I saw what happened. Yeah, so what? He checked out a chick. That happens. Relax, girl. If you want an Arab woman, you should go get one. Like, why I'm here now? I had no idea Nicole had this level of crazy jealousy. And my husband is stopping dead in his tracks to stare at this woman. It this is going to be a long effing season. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Like, maybe I'm not Muslim enough for him. Yeah, girl, you're not. And let's not even pretend you care about the religion you converted to without knowing a single thing about it. So after that little incident, though, my, I'm, I'm putting your ass back on the plane. You go back to Egypt, I don't care. What? Anyway, so Nicole's pissed, and I mean, like, really pissed. If you want to be a little womanizer, you can go back to Egypt. Womanizer for looking at a girl? Oh, God. And I honestly don't think the scene is fake. I mean, there are a lot of fake scenes on the show, but she's got those crazy eyes going. And those can't be faked. I mean, they can. I don't think she's the kind of girl that can just pop those out on command. So then let's move on to Gino and Jasmine. Ooh. 
And we're going to start off with them driving back from the meeting with the Im- immigration lawyer. You know, the meeting where we found out that Gino, attorney at law, seriously dropped the ball on one of the most important things they could have dropped the ball on, her children. I'm disappointed. And that is worse than being upset. I'm very disappointed. And yes, we can say that Jasmine should not have left without them. But I do understand her reasoning for wanting to make sure that it was a safe environment for the kids before she brings them along. I honestly would also say that she should have been on top of Gino more when it comes to these types of things, because we all know Gino. You know the expression, not just a hat rack? Well, Gino is just a hat rack. Since Gino didn't include my children's name on my K-1 visa process, it might take two years. I mean, two years sounds like a complete eternity. Like you omitting my kid's name, just it up for us. And Jasmine is correct. If he would have had an attorney and not pretended to be one, this would not have happened. I busted my ass to get you to this country. Don't sit there and criticize me for all the hard work that I've done. And Gino is all smug about it. But the lawyer does it or me, that two years that he's mentioned is not gonna change. Honestly, Gino, out of all the times that you could stand your ground and stand up for yourself and talk back, this is not one of them. You finding your voice are not the brightest moments. Neither this time, nor with the potato peeler. Once I was here, you know, we were going to do all the process to bring my kids. You promise you. Jasmine, at your big age, you should have been 100% on top of it. But unfortunately, you were too busy picking out your ass size. Do the best we can to try to fix it. So I'm going to do that myself and get them here as soon as we can. That's honestly like trusting Helen Keller to drive a car. The word trust and Gino should not be in the same sentence unless the word don't is also in that sentence. Jasmine, stop crying and sell your shit and get that lawyer. Spare us our ears, please. We're, we're kind of overhearing this. Anyway, they go back and forth a bit more. I'm just so, you will never make me happy. Yeah. I'm not a f-ing priority in your life. You know how they do. You're putting all of this on my shoulders and blaming me. You just as much as me to get your kids over the United States. And Jasmine gives her favorite line. I wanna go back to Panama. As she ugly cries until the end of their segment. (laughs) So now let's go to Kobe, Beef, and Emily. So family Emily and Kobe are driving to meet family Kobe. And of course they're doing the good old American freak out in another country. Yeah, let's pull it up all the way. Here's two, babe. I see a white guy. <laughs> and honestly, we can't rag on family Emily too much. Let's remember Libby's family. They called Andre's family's food peasant food. When you go to a dinner and you have to say, what's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah. It's yeah. not good. Yeah. Right? poor country, yes. dude. They're, so eating, they're eating peasant food. Or when Chantel's family refused to get out of the car when they got to Pedro's house in the Dominican Republic. These two families top the cape in American pearl clutching. So they get to family Kobe's house and it was such a cute scene. There were tears. There was joy. And now apparently there's going to be a Cameroonian wedding. He thinks that this is the best moment to do a traditional marriage. He wants us to honor tradition. Which I am very much about the textiles, the food. It will be fun. It will be a nice light moment in between all the stupidity that we deal with. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.